Guys, I'm incredibly excited about today's episode. It's gonna be so exciting. It's the first episode we've shot outdoors. The beautiful sun has come out and it is officially British summertime. Is it? Yeah, okay, never mind, I'll do it again. There's just something about a really good barbecue that makes summer as special as it is. Unfortunately, some of us get a little bit scared or worried when it comes to barbecues. Maybe you've burnt stuff before. Maybe you've cooked stuff and it's a bit raw. Maybe you can't light the barbecue in the first place. Don't worry. Today, we've got you covered with a Made Halal special. We are looking at the Made Halal Barbecue Masterclass. So we've got this in three parts. The first part, we're marinating three different types of meat. The second part, I'm gonna show you how to light your own barbecue. And the third part, we're gonna cook it all up. It's super simple, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so barbecue meat number one. For for me, it has to be jerk chicken. Jerk chicken is so delicious on a barbecue. You've got that nice charred flavor. You've got the smoky, the fruity flavors. It's delicious. What we're gonna do is take some scotch bonnet, some thyme, some ginger, garlic, spring onions, bit of salt, some lime juice, and of course, the all important pimento or allspice berry. And we're gonna blend this up in a food processor or you can use a pestle and mortar, using a bit of oil just to let down that consistency. You'll see that it's a little bit sort of green when you first blend it, and this is why if you have it on you, you can use a bit of browning. This is just to help with the color. Use about half a teaspoon. We're just gonna add a bit of browning to it, mix it up, adding a bit of brown sugar as well, just to help that flavor give it a good taste, it should be absolutely amazing. And so what we're gonna do, I'm using chicken thigh. The dark meat of the chicken is probably the best thing to use, but you can use breast as well if you want. I'm just gonna use my knife and score it and then rub that marinade right in, giving it a good cling film and leaving it to one side. As a side note, it's incredibly important to let your meat sit out of the fridge for at least half an hour up to an hour before you start cooking it. This is just because if you try and cook stone cold meat, it's gonna be raw in the center. So if at this point light bulbs are going up and you kind of realize, oh my gosh, that's why I've had raw meat on a barbecue, that's probably why. So leave it out the fridge for about 30 minutes up to an hour before you start cooking. Okay, next cut of meat, we are looking at lamb chops. Now lamb chops are so simple, but people overcomplicate. There's no need to cover it with a million and one spices. Just keep it natural, keep the flavor simple, bring out the flavor of that lamb. All I'm gonna do is strip off some rosemary off its stem, giving it a nice rough chop tipping it into a container along with some minced garlic, some salt, a little pinch of cumin seeds, and I love to use mint sauce just to really bring out that nice natural flavor. I'm gonna add a bit of oil into it as well, giving it a good mix. As you can see, I haven't even used a lot of marinade, but it's really gonna cover all the pieces of meat nice and evenly. Covering the lamb chops, moving that to one side, we have our final piece, which is going to be burgers. What I'm doing is combining some high fat lamb mints with some very lean beef mints. This combination is gonna really balance out. And I'm just combining it with some harissa paste, some cumin seeds, some coriander powder, but no salt. What we're gonna do is season it on the grill so that it doesn't dry out as it sits there. I'm gonna give it a light mix. I don't wanna overwork it. It's gonna become too dense and like sort of processed. I just want it to be nice and have a good bite to it. So I'm gonna give it a light mix and shape it into some burgers, making nice, even circular patty shapes. That's going to one side as well. We can let that meat just sit there, covered out of the fridge while we light our fire. So Yusuf's five key essential things that we need to start a barbecue. Number one, kindling wood. This might not be something that you would expect, but you can get this at most supermarkets, petrol stations, etc. Number two, of course, the main thing, coal. We need some coal. We're also gonna be using some cotton just to help this uh, get started. You can use fire lighters if you want. Also a tray or anything that you can use to fan it with. And the last thing is some tissue. This might not seem like the obvious thing, but you're gonna be crying a lot and some snot's gonna come out. It's gonna be unpleasant. So you need some tissue just to keep things under control. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, the reason why we're using kindling wood as opposed to anything else is I'm really not a fan of using chemicals when it comes to barbecues. You don't wanna kind of mess up the flavor of any of your food. So try and keep it as natural as possible. All I'm gonna do is make a sort of uh, stack, literally just stacking up in like almost like I don't want to call it a hashtag, but that's basically what it looks like, right? What I'm going to do now is put some cotton um, inside it, just stuffing it in the middle around the sides and stuff like that. Again, this just eliminates the kind of need to use fire lighters and stuff like that. I want to keep this as natural as possible. Okay, so we're just going to start lighting it, bismillah. Just light all ends. Okay, so now that the fire has started to catch, this is our fire starter. See, no chemicals, we've already started it. Now that you can see I've got the wood on the side, this is where we start piling it up a bit. The idea is that we kind of get a small fire going and then we get the charcoal kind of placed around it and the charcoal will then light because of that. So I'm just going to start placing more pieces of wood so that we can get that fire going a little bit bigger. We can start with our coal. I'm just going to put it on the side for now. What I'm going to do is use a pair of tongs just to place it over the fire uh, and this is so that it can start to catch and start burning itself. So I'm literally just going to tuck it in around the fire. 
Okay, so as you can see, the coals are now white hot. This is what you want. You don't want any flames to be coming out of it. You don't want it to be any like sort of, you, know, you don't want it to be very black. They're very white and this is the perfect way to cook it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is spread the coals out so that I've got one sort of like high density area, and one lower density. This is gonna control our heat. So we've got one that's gonna be a lot hotter and then one side that's gonna be a lot cooler. And this is gonna help us to control so we don't burn anything. Okay, so we put the jerk chicken on first. Uh, the grills have heated up a lot. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're keeping the meat out of the fridge for at least an hour. So it's gonna go straight on. The thing about jerk chicken is that it needs to be like almost smoked. It needs to be charred. It's like part of what makes jerk chicken jerk. So you can't technically make jerk chicken in your oven. Uh, it has to be done over heat, over fire um, to get that smoky flavor. That's what makes it authentic. So this is the only way you can really make jerk chicken is over fire. Okay, so just to like kind of multitask and get things out of the way. Now that the chicken's got a good sear, I'm just moving it towards the back. So to kind of keep it, you know, cooking over time slowly, slowly. Uh, I'm going to put the lamb chops on now as well, just so that we can kind of get things moving. So the thing with chops, which uh, is a bit more forgiving, is that they don't have to be like fully, fully cooked through like chicken does. If they're a little bit pink in the middle, it's still okay. So this is why I put them on second. The chicken is a priority. I want it to be cooked fully through uh, and then the chops can go on second. I'm just trying to get some nice color on both sides. About, you know, three or four minutes on each side should be okay, depending on the heat. And it should be nice and slightly pink in the middle. So the last thing that's going on is these burgers. I'm just literally going to stick them straight on. I'm going to use a spatula to slightly press them down, but this will just do its own thing. The meat is slightly cold, but it will be nice and evenly cooked by the end of it. So burgers at this heat, it was about maybe six to eight minutes on each side. Cool. So we have our jerk chicken, lamb chops and burger. Let's start with the burger. So as you can see, we've got our lovely burger, really nice and juicy. We've got the mint yogurt sauce on top and we've got an onion jam. You might not have seen the recipe for that, and that's because it's on Patreon. If you want to see that, go ahead and check the description, and you can see an exclusive recipe on how to make this beautiful onion jam, which goes really well with this burger. Well, let's try it, Bismillah. Yeah, it's unreal. You've got sweet, you've got a bit of, you know, that meaty flavor, and then you've got a nice cool mint yogurt sauce that cuts through it. It's perfect. Try the lamb. You want to have a look? So you can see the lamb is just like blushing pink on the inside, which is what you want. You don't want it to be grayed out and dry. You want it to be nice and like, you know, slightly moist and blushing. This is perfect. Uh, the mint and the rosemary just bring out the natural flavors in the lamb. Uh, it's really delicious. And finally, we have our jerk chicken, my favorite. Let's see how that tastes. So our jerk chicken, you can see it's very, very juicy already. Alhamdulillah, it's banging. It's like, you got the nice smokiness of the pimento and that fire that goes through it. You got the really nice uh, scotch bonnet, which is giving a bit of fire. There's some, you know, the brown sugar, the lime that goes through it, just cuts off those flavors. Uh, it's just delicious. The whole, the whole platter is, is just absolutely delicious, if I say so myself. Wow, this was an episode and a half. Try out yourself and tag us in your Instagram stories at Freshly Grounded. Uh, and let's see what you can come up with, inshallah. Okay, uh, what you might want to do as well, if it's not a windy day, you can just start blowing on it gently. This is going to encourage the flow of oxygen, which is going to help the fire burn a bit more. I'm gonna go get some tongs. Be right back. Okay, um, Hashim, the clip before where I said to blow on the fire, take that out and just replace it with this instead. Okay, so what you can do, if, especially if it's not a windy day, you can actually use a fan and start fanning the fire just to introduce more oxygen to it. It's gonna help it burn a lot quicker and that's what we wanna do. Do you mind um, if you could get me another tray? This one's kind of 